Professor Hallux's eye guide with the Association of British Dispensing Opticians. Come on, Professor. We'll be late. OK. I'll just throw on a coat. Oh, lovely. There's a nice purple stripe on this one. Maybe a scarf. What do you think? Yellow or red? What the heck, both? Nice jazzy pink hat. Blooming egg, Professor. You look more colourful than a Christmas tree. I'm not sure all those colours really go together, you know. What are you talking about? I look great. If you say so. That's the funny thing about colours. It's hard to say exactly how other people see them. In fact, there's a curious condition that affects some people where they really do see colours differently to most people. You're talking about colour blindness. Fascinating topic. Let's go and see Sally Specks. She's a dynamic dispensing optician. Maybe she and Simon Squint, a brilliant optometrist, can tell us about it. We may even get some facts for our new eye guide whilst we're at it. Now that Simon has tested your eyes, Professor, I can assure you that you're not actually colour blind. You just seem to have... Um, a rather original sense of style. Well, I could have told you that, but what makes someone truly colourblind? And what do they see? Is the world all grey and black like an old photograph? It's not quite like that. Come on, let's take a closer look and you can see for yourself. We're through the cornea and into the pupil at the centre of the iris. Breathe in, everyone. It's a sunny day and this eye is squeezing the iris shut so the eye doesn't get too much light. Phew! Now we're through the lens and travelling with the rays of light to the back of the eye on the retina. Wow! What are all those pointy things? There's millions of them. We're ever so tiny, small enough to see the surface of the retina and it's covered with over 125 million special cells called cones and rods. What do they all do? Looks like a pretty bumpy surface. Don't worry, we're not going to touch down. These cells are very delicate. As you can see, there are two shapes. The rod-shaped ones have a special job, and that's to measure the brightness and shade that there is in the light waves coming into the eye. These are the cells that help you see when it's getting dark. You can still see the outlines of things, even if you can't see much else. That's right, there's loads of these cells. So what about the cones? I love cones normally. Not ice cream cones, Professor. Definitely not ice cream cones. The cone-shaped cells are geared up to detect colours, although I suppose they are like ice cream cones in as much as they come in different varieties. What, like chocolate, strawberry and vanilla? Excellent yummers! Sorry, Professor. Green, blue and red. Some cones detect green light, whilst others detect blue or red. Oh, not half as tasty. Yes, but a whole lot more useful, Professor. Very useful. They send the information they detect to the brain so that you get an accurate picture in your head of the colours in the objects around you. But hang on. What about purple, or yellow, or puce, aquamarine, teal, magenta? There's a host of other colours out there. Not just red, green and yellow. Sounds like you're describing your outfit, Professor. <laughs> Very funny. But seriously, how can three types of cone put together all the colours in the rainbow? It's like mixing paint. With the primary colours, you can get an infinite amount of combinations. Light uses different primary colours, green instead of yellow. But the idea is the same, so that's how you see colours normally. Brilliant. So we all see colours in this way, right? Hang on, let's check out a different eye. This one belongs to someone who has colour blindness. There doesn't seem to be as many cones here. That's right. People who are colourblind either have more or less cones than normal, or their cone cells can be faulty and give the brain the wrong message about the light they're detecting. We don't want to damage them anymore, so let's leave them in peace. If the cone cells are missing or faulty, it means you have trouble seeing the difference between colours. Often, red and green will look the same. Green can almost look brown. Makes it a bit tricky to tell when the traffic lights have changed. So... How can you tell if someone is colourblind and not just, say, terrible at choosing colours that go together? I heard that, nurse. Optometrists can use special charts made of dots which have patterns in different colours. Often, these are number shapes. The optometrist can tell if you're colourblind if you're not able to see the difference in the patterns. Thank you, Mr Squint. All that information about colour blindness can go into the eye guide. Let's get it uploaded. <laughs> Paper. Upload complete. Oh, before you go, Professor, have you got time for a further quick fact for the eye guide? I don't see why not. Well, 
boys are far more likely to be colourblind. In fact, if you know 12 boys, one of them is probably at least a little colourblind. So, girls, the next time a boy asks you if something matches, you better lend him a hand. That's incredible! Both eye-watering and inspiring. Professor Hallux's Eye Guide with the Association of British Dispensing Opticians. Find out more and get hands-on at funkidslive.com slash Hallux.